Hi, everybody. Today's Flip Along is Bits and Pieces by Judy Schachner. For a cat, Tink was an odd duck. Perhaps it was because he had been raised by a granny man. Or maybe it was because his brain was the size of a frozen pea. No matter. His family loved their boy to bits. One time, when he and his sisters were quite young, they peeked into each one of his little brown ears. And do you know what they saw? They saw each other. And this explained a lot, such as their cat's eating habits. After months of sneaking these kinds of snacks, Tink teetered into the kitchen and tipped over. And no amount of coaxing could put their boy back on his paws. So his mother, who loved her boy to bits, had no choice but to take Tink to the kitty clinic, where they treated him with green gloves and a giant red pill. When Tink came home, he had forgotten all about being sick. But he never forgot the excitement of being outdoors. Still, Tink enjoyed his life as an indoor cat because he did everything with his family. He read with them and bathed with them. He worked with them and played with them. But from time to time, his family had to leave Tink home alone. So they decided to find their sweet boy a little friend to keep him company. After a few awkward moments and a tussle, Big and Little settled in for a long, cozy nap. And from that moment on, the two cats loved each other to bits and pieces. Just as he had learned to be a good cat from his granny man, Tink decided to be a mother brother to his kitten. Among his many lessons were weaving and warming and how to help with the laundry. Though his experience was limited, Tink's best lessons were all about the great outdoors. And over the years, he tried to get more experience. Get back here, Sneaky Pete. Oh, no, you don't, monkey fans. Gotcha, Butterball. But it was a battle Tink would always lose. And on his way to becoming a very old cat, Tink would lose many more things. Most of his hearing, a few pounds, and all of his common sense. So that's why on his 20th birthday, Tink licked a stick of butter, then slipped unnoticed out the front door while his father brought in the newspaper. For the first time in his life, Tink was an outdoor cat, and it felt intoxicating. He strolled past two barking dogs and three squawking crows. Then Tink wove his way through a thick stand of bamboo until he met the moon on the other side. I'm going home now, announced the old boy. Or so he thought. Because after a night of wandering, Tink woke up confused and hungry inside the middle of an old rubber tire. And sitting on the floor right next to him was a plate of fresh pink salmon. A block away, two little girls were studying a poster about a lost cat. Hey, said Maya, isn't that the cat in the walker's garage? Yup, said Ali. It sure is. Then off they flew like two feathers in the wind. 
But right around the corner and two streets down, the cat stranger was beginning to cause a real commotion. Where did he come from? It's like a miracle. Oh, he's so cute. Will they keep him? He came from the tire. Do you think he can see? His eyes are so glassy. No, Tugger likes to eat cats. Just as Tink was basking in the glow of so many new friends, a nice man plucked him from the tire and placed him inside a cardboard box. Sorry, fella, said the man. We've got to bring you to the animal shelter. But moments before the lid was lowered, the two little sleuths on silver scooters came racing toward the crowd. Huffing and puffing right behind them was a lady who looked like she had lost her best friend. We found her, shouted the girls, dropping their scooters. Found who? Someone shouted. Tink's mother, of course, replied the girls. It's another miracle, declared a child. Well, it wasn't a miracle. But to the lady who loved her boy to bits and pieces, it sure felt like one. Over in the box, Tink sat as still as a stick until he looked up and saw two sweet girls who reminded him of his own sisters. Come on, cutie pie, said Allie. You're going home, said Maya. Then as both girls gently lifted the old boy up for one last kiss, they couldn't help but see into Tink's soft brown ears. And you do know what they saw. They saw each other. Thanks for reading along with us. Be sure to tune in next week for another story.